In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A reading from St. Peter's First Letter. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God, and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you are not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. The Word of the Lord This is one of those parts of Scripture most known, and known so well by most of us, that we perhaps know it too well. And when we know something too well, we don't think about it always correctly, and we tend to pull it out of context, and we don't appreciate it for all of its beauty. How many people, most notably spouses, are so close to each other that they forget why they love each other in the first place? You get used to it, so used to it that your husband's charm is noticed by others, but only annoys you now. So much so that your wife's intelligence is appreciated by so many around you and her, but ho-hum everyday stuff to you. It is good once in a while to take a step back and see the full scene. A wider perspective helps with people, but also with many other things. I am guessing that your paycheck will look a lot better from the perspective of a third world country, too. So it is with this New Testament idea that we Christians are a royal priesthood. We know what the Old Testament priests did. They mediated between God and his people. They did this with sacrifices. Sacrifices that appeased God, that, that paid for sins in a way. We also know that we have the ultimate high priest, Jesus Christ, whose ultimate sacrifice paid the price for sins, so that no more bloodshed in the temple courtyard was needed. The temple curtain, keeping us from the presence of God, rightly ripped in two on Good Friday. We are good with God, through the blood of Christ. We can go right to the Father in prayer. There is no barrier between us and God. And so we don't need a priest anymore, mediating on our behalf. There is no barrier. There is no sacrifices needed. There is no curtain. And if anybody gets in that way, there will be a theological fight eventually. For not only is that wrong, it is dangerous. It keeps people from the grace of God. There is no barrier between the sinner and the forgiveness of God. So when someone says you need a priest, a mediator, we say no. We are a priesthood in ourselves. But, but, this was never to take the place of the church or her ministry. Not at all. In fact, God called the whole nation of Israel in the Old Testament a priesthood too, long before Peter came around onto the scene and wrote these words we just heard, or even before the temple court curtain tore in two on Good Friday. The nation of Israel was his mediator too, in a way, his mediator with the world. 
they were the ones that prophesied. They were the ones who lived ethical lives. They were the ones who were a beacon of hope and peace in a messy ancient world, or at least were supposed to be. So fast forward to your life. How are you a priest? Offering sacrifices pleasing to God. And in the Old Testament way, in the Old Testament nation of Israel way, mediating with the rest of the world. This is how. Your everyday vocation and your work in the church. Both are important. Both are heaven's work done on earth. How does God take care of the world? He does it through you. You the teacher. You the plumber. You the firefighter. You the garbage collector. And how does the world know about his forgiving love? Through you just as you are in the world doing these tasks. After Peter spoke these priesthood words, he talks about the different roles we play in his letter, the different vocations into which he has called us, God has called us, our family vocations, and our economic ones too. And it is in these vocations when we are out in the world that we preach to a pagan society, as Peter said. And when given the chance, in our day-to-day lives, doing good work, doing God's work, when given the chance, we speak. We speak the actual words of forgiveness and love. Forgiveness in Christ. This is how we are priests in our everyday lives. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, because of your righteousness, We are made right with God the Father. We no longer need our good deeds. We no longer need a priest mediating on our behalf with sacrifices because we have your sacrifice on the cross. And now you glorify us who do not deserve it by lifting us up to a startling degree as you use us in our vocations to love the world. Give us the strength when called upon to speak your forgiveness to those who so desperately need it. In your name we pray. Amen.